Okay, hello. Um, thank you for inviting me. My name is Yarimar Carrasquillo, and I'm a tenure track investigator in the intramural program here at NCCIH. Um, the work that I will be presenting today, it's higher up in the brain, so we're, we're done with the periphery for now. Um, and as Dr. Mosley nicely presented in his talk, we know that pain is not static, but can be modulated up and down depending on many different factors. And this is exemplified in, for example, stress-induced analgesia, as well as in pathological pain conditions that we see increases in sensitivity. The main mission of my lab is to understand the mechanisms that underlie this bidirectional modulation of pain in the brain. We have focused our work on the central amygdala, which is a limbic brain structure that has received a lot of attention in about the last 10, 15 years as a site that promotes pain. Now, when we looked at the historic view of the central amygdala, if we look at the early studies in the 80s and, and 90s, it pointed the central amygdala as a site that modulates analgesia. So I've been puzzled by this, uh, by this question and the work that I'll show you today we, we, we think we've put an end to this seemingly contradictory historic view of the central amygdala in the modulation of pain, and I hope that I'll convince you that the central amygdala is actually functioning um, as a dual, it has a dual and opposing function in the modulation of pain. And we, we believe that we have begun to identify the mechanism by which the central amygdala can do this dual function. Um, in our lab, what we do is the, the overarching hypothesis is that the modulation of pain in the CEA is cell type and circuit specific. We use uh, molecular genetic strategies in mice to tackle our question, and we have focused on two specific subpopulations of cells based on their genetic identity. One of the, of the cells expresses PKC delta and the other one expresses somatostatin. And we have decided to, to start with these two populations of cells because they constitute most of the CEA, as is shown in this figure, and because they have completely non-overlapping uh, expressions so that it, it allows us to look at two uh, independent populations. Um, the, the behavior model has been presented by, by, by Alex before, but it's basically we look at the at the tactile hypersensitivity by looking at the force that is required to induce a withdrawal. Um, more force means less pain, the animals can tolerate more, and less force uh, in, means that the animals are in, in more pain. The neuropathic pain model that we use is the cough model. We uh, expose the sciatic nerve and we put a little um, plastic tubing around the nerve and that will make the animals highly hypersensitive. Okay, using these approaches, what we have found is that, as I mentioned earlier, the central amygdala functions as this pain rheostat that can turn pain up and down depending on different uh, conditions. And the, the mechanism by which we have identified that this happens is by uh, selective modulation of excitability of these cells. So if we look at the, at the PKC delta expressing cells, when we look at the activity of these neurons, these neurons have increases in the activity in, uh, in, the, in the pain condition. And if we block that activity, what we see is that now the animals that were initially in a lot of pain, now they have reversal of pain, so they don't feel the pain. Um, demonstrating that these neurons uh, function to increase pain and are therefore pronoceptive. If we look at the, uh, on the other hand, at the somatostatin expressing cells, we see a completely different phenotype. So what we see, is that the somatostatin neurons have now decreases in pain, so they are silenced in the context of, of pathological pain. And when we activate the neurons chemogenetically, we see this very potent analgesia, demonstrating that activation of these cells is anti-nociceptive uh, anti reduction, um, reducing pain. So together, we're showing that um, the activity of these two neurons is what drives the, 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 the dual function of the central amygdala. And in the last couple of seconds that I have, what I want to show you is where we're, where we're heading as a, uh, as a follow-up of these exciting findings. So what we want to know is the how this is happening in the central amygdala, and we take an airplane view and a zoom-in view of the, of the mechanism. At the zoom-in level, what we do is exemplified here. So Anisha in the lab, 
she, she wanted to know if there was anything special about these cells to begin with. And what she showed is that these cells are actually completely opposite in their activities, so that the somatostatin cells at baseline have more activity than the PKC delta, but then in the context of pain, this is totally reversed. Um, at the circuit level, what we have found as a group effort is that the nociceptive inputs are coming from the parabrachial nucleus and that these are necessary for the, for, the, for the behaviors that we're seeing here. And then another point that we're trying to, to do is looking at the outputs of the cells. So we have shown selective uh, inhibition going back to the parabrachial inhibits, and that's one way of, of mediating analgesia. And for the PKC delta cells, we have shown that the output to a hypothalamic nucleus called the Sony Serta can drive the, the, the pronociception by inhibiting these cells. So basically what we're trying to do is to create this big roadmap of what are the circuits mechanisms that are driving the beautiful modulation that Dr. Mosley demonstrated in people, but in, in a mouse model, and then zooming in at all these different sites to try to identify the cellular and synaptic mechanisms driving this. So with that, I'd like to thank my amazing group of people and our collaborators and NCCIH, of course. Thank you.